Hi everyone! Today I am here to wrap up some graphic novels that I read recently. If you've been with my channel a long time, you may remember that probably three years ago now, long time, I was really really into graphic novels, constantly discovering new series and talking about them pretty frequently on this channel. However, comics can be a really expensive hobby, and I fell out of the habit of reading them and picking up trades as furiously as I could. I've fallen out of that a little bit and definitely felt it as a part of my reading life that I greatly missed. So I've been using my library lately as a resource to get all of the comics and graphic novels that I have missed out on in the past couple of years and the ones that are quite well known and well regarded in the comics and graphic novels world that I just never got to. So here today I'm going to review five graphic novels that I read recently. First starting with Snot Girl Volume 1 written by Brian Lee O'Malley and illustrated by Leslie Hung. This is the first volume of the series. I have to say I was so excited about the idea of this series. I really love Brian Lee O'Malley's work, particularly Seconds. I think Seconds is one of the best graphic novels that I have ever read. So I was a little disheartened to learn that the graphic novel was not going to be illustrated by Brian Lee O'Malley, but only written by him. But this actually was totally fine because I love Leslie Hung's art style. It is the story of a fashion blogger named Lottie, and it is largely about her life as being a public online figure. She's very obsessed with her appearance and the way that she is perceived by other people. And if that was just a facade and we learned more about the hardships that come with being a social media personality and maybe some of the underlying realities of that, and if there was a little more emotional depth to it, then I think that this would be an interesting enough story. But that's where it falls apart for me, is that there, the characters lack a lot of emotional depth. Particularly Lottie, our protagonist, whom I imagine we are supposed to care for in some way. She just has no emotional depth as a character at all. She's completely surface. Everything that we see and everything that she puts out online seems to be all there really is, which feels very unrealistic. And therefore, I have a difficult time relating to this character or caring much for her and what happens to her. There is a plot involving a new friend that she makes and murder kind of out of nowhere. It was a bit intentionally ambiguous in terms of what was happening exactly and the trajectory of the plot in the future, much like most first volumes of, of graphic novels are. They collect usually five or six single issues of comics, and that first arc is designed to entice you and to keep you interested and keep you going. But for me, I don't really feel much need to continue with the series, which I think is a shame because I love the art style. And while I was, you know, a little disappointed that it wasn't Brian Lee O'Malley, Leslie Hung's art is beautiful, particularly the color palette that she uses. It is very much my aesthetic, maybe not like in terms of my own fashion or, or outward identity, but I love the colors she uses. So if Snot Girl turns around, I would love to hear it, but I was rather unimpressed and left pretty cold to it, so it might be one that I just let go. Next, I'm going to talk about Honor Girl by Maggie Thrash. This is a graphic novel that came out in 2015, and I've heard really great things from people both on booktube and in my real life. When I posted an Instagram picture of my library copy of Honor Girl, my best friend from elementary school DM'd me and said that she really, really enjoyed it. So that was a great endorsement. This is the story of Maggie. It's a graphic memoir. I guess graphic novel's the wrong phrase for it. It's a graphic memoir about Maggie's experience at summer camp. And it's very much a coming of age story of her life. Um, trying to fit in in this place in this like awkward puberty state and she also has a crush on one of the older camp counselors but is confused because this counselor is a girl too. It's one of her first experiences confronting these feelings that she doesn't see expressed in other people and she wants to keep it a secret and kind of figure it out for herself a little bit. So it's a lot of, of self-exploration, not just of sexuality, but of, of being a young woman in general. And it's just about figuring out who you are and who you want to be and how that fits into everyone else who's going through the same kind of angst. Um, so I really liked the trajectory of the story overall, and I hadn't read a coming-of-age memoir like this before, so I really enjoyed it. It isn't as pretentious-seeming as something like Fun Home by Alison Bechdel, and is therefore maybe more accessible to people who are going through the same things at the same time, because I think this is marketed as a YA graphic novel, which is not a thing that I have read very much of or know very much about. 
And I really enjoyed it for those reasons. And I think that it's great that more stories like this are being told and being marketed to audiences that will, I think, get the most out of it. It's not my favorite thing that I've ever read, though. I do have a couple of quibbles, mostly being the art, which I don't think you can talk about graphic novels without talking about art style. And some art is going to resonate more for certain people than others. I found it to be rather simple, maybe even bordering on simplistic, too simple to the detriment of my enjoyment of the comic. And I didn't find it to be very aesthetically pleasing. I just didn't really get on with the way that she drew people pretty much, which again, it's totally a personal preference thing. It just wasn't my kind of art style, although I did like the way that it was colored and I thought that that was well done. But another quibble that I have is the way that this story ends up. Obviously, I don't want to talk about the ending because of spoilers, but I will say that it does seem to end rather anticlimactically and rather suddenly. And whether based in real life or not, I do think that there would have been a more polished way to end this story and perhaps the abruptness and the lack of of finality was intentional. And I get that. It just didn't seem satisfying to me as a reader, and therefore it wasn't my favorite, but I still really enjoyed it overall, and I'm glad to have read it. Next, I'm going to talk about Blue is the Warmest Color by Julie Marot. This is a French graphic novel that was translated into English by Ivanka Hanenberger. This is one that I have been wanting to read for years. It's one of those really kind of Hallmark graphic novels, one that is very highly lauded, and it was turned into a really successful film that I'm eager to watch eventually, um, and have put off watching because I wanted to read the source material first. This is also a queer coming of age story about two women, but it is much more adult and dark in theme, because you know from the get-go that one of the two women has passed away, and it is largely a, an exploration of grief from the other woman in the relationship, but it is told through the diaries of the deceased partner. Um, so you're seeing the alive partner respond to the diaries of the deceased partner and her experience of learning about her sexuality and, and exploring it with her partner. So it does fall into those trappings of gay stories being tragic. I think that queer love stories have come a long way since this story was told, and I do think that there are things that are beautiful about it, most specifically the art style, which I think is beautiful, and I, I really liked this art style, but it did lack some emotional resonance for me just because it really escalates quickly at the end. Most of the novel covers a very short period of time, and then, and then there's a time jump, and we skip ahead and rush over a lot of things that I found to be rather significant, and I have this problem a lot with time jumps and poor pacing, it doesn't give you as the reader time to really experience the feelings that you're meant to be feeling or to process what's really going on. And it's over before you know it. And I guess that could be realistic in terms of losing a loved one unexpectedly, for instance. You don't have time to process or really experience those feelings before you're forced to face them. But I don't think that this book really even gives you time to face them. And you get so little time with these characters in their relationships. I just felt held at a distance. I do think that this is a significant story because it does display sexuality on the page very bluntly. It does not shy away from sex or nudity, which I think is very important and refreshing in a queer love story, but I just felt emotionally distanced from it. And that probably was in part because I am not the target audience for this story, um, but I did enjoy it for what it was. I just thought that maybe it was overhyped and while maybe revolutionary for its time and for the medium of graphic novels in general, I don't know, but but I was personally much more affected by the story of Fun Home, which is a queer memoir that deals a lot with coming into your sexuality and also death and grief. So I think that Fun Home, while doing something entirely differently because it's all about the loss of a parent rather than the loss of a lover, I do think that Fun Home is doing those things more successfully and therefore I would recommend that more. But I did enjoy it overall and I'm glad to have finally read it because I've heard so much about it for so long and now I can finally watch the film. Next, I'm going to talk about French Milk by Lucy Nisley. This is my second Lucy Nisley work. If you're unfamiliar with her work, she writes graphic memoirs, but often they are collections of her, her drawings and her travel logs and her day-to-day -day musings on things and her doodles. And there often isn't a cohesive narrative. It, it's basically looking into her loosely structured personal journals and, and sketchbooks, which I think is a really refreshing take on the form. And I've really enjoyed what I read of hers before. I read An Age of License, which was a travel log memoir. French Milk is her comic journal about her experience living in France for about a month and a half with her mom. Right after Christmas and into the new year, she lived in Paris with her literally just 
doodles of things that they did, things that they saw, a lot of things that they ate, feelings that she had. She was thinking a lot about her boyfriend, who she left back home, and musing on the state of their relationship, but also her relationship with her parents. I really enjoyed this because it also included photos from the trip, photos of her and photos of her mom and things that they saw, and you could contrast the drawing that she did versus the photo, which I thought was really neat. And I can't remember if an Age of License included photography, so it was really neat to see it because it, that was a personal touch that I really enjoyed. But because this was her first work and it literally is just her journal, it did lack some narrative cohesion like there wasn't much of a narrative it was just the story of her trip and not a lot happens there's no climax really there's no story really just to kind of experience her trip vicariously through her which i thought was enjoyable but not remarkable and i having read a much later work of hers i can see how much she has grown as an artist and as a storyteller and i'm excited to read the rest of her works in order of publication date because i think that that will be the best way to really see her grow and develop as a comic artist um, because at this point she'd never published anything before she was you know still in school and still learning and still trying to get her footing in the industry whereas now she's a much more established figure it's so, something really different if you don't like really serialized comic stories or even graphic novels as a whole this is really easy to get through and just generally really enjoyable and and there's something really personal about reading someone's diary it's just the medium itself and reading someone's diary in the moment that feels really intimate and i enjoyed that so i'm looking forward to reading more of her stuff and last comes skim written by mariko tamaki and illustrated by jillian tamaki i have been wanting to read this again for years i've heard a lot about the tamakis on booktube in my time and i have read this one summer and really enjoyed it again like a really interesting coming of age graphic novel but i haven't read a lot of their work so i was really really excited to finally dive into the backlog and read some of those things and skim is the one that i've probably heard about the most i think i originally heard about it on Colleen's channel. She used to have a channel called Little Ghost Creations, and she hasn't made videos actively for several years, um, but I really loved hearing her opinions on things. Shortly after that, maybe because of Colleen, maybe not, I don't remember, uh, Mercedes or Mercy's Bookish Musings read and loved Skim and talked about it very highly. This is also a coming-of-age story. Did not realize that these were all coming-of-age stories, basically, um, but it is a coming-of-age story of a high schooler who is nicknamed Skim because of her weight. Her name is actually Kim, and it's a coming of age story about her being in school and she and her friend are kind of casually into Wicca and magic, dabbling in that in a sort of ironic way, the way that teenagers do. And a lot of that is the pursuit of seeming edgy and interesting, um, while also trying to actually find out who you really are. But there is a darker undertone to it because it opens with one of the most popular girls in school. Uh, her boyfriend has died by suicide and is dealing with the grief of that. And the students around her don't treat it as something that serious, even though it was a serious loss for her. They either don't have the emotional maturity to handle this sort of thing and don't take it seriously, or they don't care enough to, or maybe a combination of both. So that's kind of happening on the, the fringes. And I thought that that was a really interesting way to examine a very serious topic that teenagers deal with, which is depression and, and suicide. And then it's also coupled with Skim trying to figure out her feelings and her sexuality because she's very attracted to one of her female teachers. And so that is also a plot line, but it doesn't feel as structured as that. It's more of just a loose story, all of these things kind of happening simultaneously. And stuff does happen throughout the course of the narrative and events do occur and things do change. Um, and there's growth in all of that, but it just feels more free than a structured narrative. I don't know if I can exactly explain it, but at the same time, it's a really one of the best explorations that I've read of depression, especially being a teenager and, and dealing with really serious things and really inconsequential things in, in tandem, um, and the way that depression plays into that. I thought it was really, really well done. It wasn't the most emotionally impactful thing that I've read, but I loved the art style and I liked the way the story was told. The fact that it wasn't all tied up in a little bow and it wasn't the tidiest or tightest storytelling ever. There was a little bit of, of, of room there, I think. I really enjoyed it and I'm eager to read more of the Tamaki stuff. Like I said, I've read this one summer, but I haven't read anything else and I'm really eager to because I liked it a lot. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of these graphic novels if you've read them or if you have recommendations for me for other graphic novels that I should read. I already have a stack on my nightstand of ones that I'm eager to get to. I just didn't want to get too ahead of myself and read too many things that wouldn't fit into one video well. So really looking forward to that. Lo would love your recommendations if you have them, your thoughts on these graphic novels, and anything else that you have to say down in the comments. And other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.